Welcome to this tutorial about configuring persistent storage for your Windows containers running on Amazon Elastic Container Service. As we know, containers are ephemeral in nature and their state is not persisted upon termination. A majority of Windows Enterprise applications require persistent and shared storage to provide high availability, high scalability, and optimum performance. Until now, Amazon ECS Windows customers had to pre-configure their EC2 instances to mount the file systems using SMB Global Mapping and AWS Systems Manager documents before deploying their ECS applications. Also, since containers are dynamically placed across instances, customers had to mount the required file systems across all instances. This led to operational overhead and reduced agility. With our recently launched support for Amazon FSx for Windows File Server, Amazon ECS now enables you to provision your Windows tasks with persistent, highly available, and shared file storage using Amazon FSx for Windows File Server. Amazon FSx for Windows File Server provides fully managed, highly reliable, and scalable file storage that is accessible over the industry standard SMB protocol. Amazon ECS now natively integrates with Amazon FSx for Windows File Server to mount shared file systems into containers. This allows customers to deploy workloads that require access to shared storage, such as machine learning workloads, Windows apps such as SQL Server, IIS, etc. You can mount one or more Amazon FSx for Windows File Server file system volumes to an ECS container running on an ECS Windows instance. You can share Amazon FSx for Windows File Server file system volumes between multiple ECS tasks and between multiple ECS containers within a single ECS task. In Amazon ECS, customers can add one or more volume definitions to an ECS task definition. You specify an Amazon FSx file system ID for the volume definition and ECS will take care of mounting the file system on the container without customers having to worry about configuring the underlying infrastructure or any file system dependencies. ECS customers can get started with ECS support for FSx for Windows file system by using CloudFormation template, CLI, SDKs, or the AWS Management Console. In this demo, I am going to demonstrate how to create a new Amazon FSx for Windows file server and configure it as shared file system for my Windows containers. My first container will run an IIS web server with its content stored on the FSx file system. I will modify my web page from a second container that will have access to the same shared file system and demonstrate how easy it is to share data between containers while persisting data on my FSx file system. Before we get started, let's look at some of the prerequisites that are required for this demo. We will need a Microsoft Active Directory to join the FSx Windows file server and your Windows EC2 instance, an Amazon ECS cluster with ECS optimized Windows EC2 instance that is joined to this Active Directory domain. We need an ECS task execution IAM role with the following permissions an AWS Secrets Manager secret, or AWS Systems Manager parameter store to store the Active Directory credentials. Please make sure that your security group, group rules are configured to allow permissions to your FSx file system, EC2 instance, and also the IAS web server ports. Let's go ahead and create our FSx file system. On the FSx console, click on Create File System, and select Amazon FSx for Windows File Server, and then click Next you can define an optional name for your file system. Next, select the deployment type. FSx allows you to create single AZ or multi AZ deployment type. With multi AZ file systems, your data is synchronously replicated between two different availability zones and you have highly available file servers for your file system. With single AZ file systems, your data is replicated within the same availability zone. Next, select the storage type. You can choose between SSD or HDD storage types to align with your application performance requirements. Specify the storage capacity. By default, we recommend a throughput capacity for your file system, but you can select the throughput capacity that is independent of the storage capacity of your file system. You can choose from eight megabytes per second all the way to two gigabytes per second. 
Next, select the VPC, security groups, and subnets for your file system. Because I'm creating a multi-AZ file system, I specify my preferred and standby subnet. Next, go ahead and select the Active Directory domain. I'm going to leave the other settings at the default. Click on Next, and then Submit Create File System. My file system has been successfully created and ready for use. Next, I'm going to show you how to create a new task definition in ECS. Let's go to the ECS console. I will be using my existing ECS cluster shown here. Click on Task Definitions, Create New Task Definition, and then select the EC2 launch type. Click on Next Step. Enter a task definition name. And then I will select my task execution role, which has all the permissions I shared with you during the prerequisite section of this demo. Next, add the FSX volume to your task definition by clicking on Add Volume. Here, I'll define a name and then select my volume type. Under Volume Type, select FSX for Windows File Server and then select my newly created FSX file system. For the root directory within the file system, I'm going to use the default FSX share. Specify the ARN of my AWS Systems Manager Parameter Store and the Active Directory domain and then click Add. Now let's go ahead and create our containers. Click on Add Container and specify a name for the first container. I will be using Microsoft IIS image for this container. Next, I will define the memory limit and also configure the port mappings for my IIS web service. Under the Environment section, I will specify the PowerShell command that will be used to create my index.html file on the FSx file system. My FSx file system that was added um, as a volume to the task definition will be mounted on the C colon inet pub www root mount point on this container. As you can see, I'm creating a new index.html file here in that mount point. I'll scroll below and under storage and logging, I'm going to configure my FSx volume and specify the mount point, which would be C colon pub slash www root, and then click add. Next, I'm going to create my second container. I'm going to give a name for my second container, use the Microsoft IIS image for my second container. Next, I'm going to define the memory limit for my container. And then under the environment section, I'm going to use specify the PowerShell command that will be used to create a new file with the modified context for my index.html file. And then I will copy the newly created file and overwrite my existing index.html file. You can see I'm using c colon slash fsx dir to mount my fsx volume on this container. I'm going to define this mount point against my fsx volume under the storage and logging section and then click on Add to complete my container definition. Now that I have defined both my containers, I'm going to go ahead and click on Create to create my task definition. Once the task definition is created successfully, I'm going to run this task on my ECS cluster. Click on Run Task, and here, select the EC2 launch type against your ECS cluster. Then scroll down and click on Run Task. Now my containers are being launched. And when I click on the status, I can see it's in pending state. This will take a few minutes to complete. And eventually, you will see the status in running state. If I expand on my container 1, where I am creating my index.html and launching my AS service, this will provide me a link to my web page. Click on this link and you will see the index.html page that was created by container one. Continue to refresh your page and roughly about after five minutes, you should see the page will be modified with the contents that were updated by container two. Now that we have successfully demonstrated how to create an FSX for Windows file system and share it as persistent storage between containers, here are some additional resources for you to get started. Thank you for watching this demo.